The fecal uh, DNA screening test came out uh, about four years ago with a lot of fanfare and, and um, a lot of excitement. It was the first way to look at um, or screen for cancer of the colon by looking at DNA instead of just looking at chemical tests for blood in the stool. So that made a lot more sense. Um, many of us had been looking forward to that for a while. <clears throat> and again, the company that uh, runs it is doing very well um, in terms of pushing their product, but it's gotten sort of lackluster uh, reviews. We'll talk about why in just a minute. But first, my name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, uh, with PrevMed. This is the Prevent Prevention Channel. We're uh, helping people understand how to prevent the things that kill and disable them, like heart attack, stroke, dementia, and in this case, colon cancer. Now, why am I showing this and what am I showing? This is the progression of a typical uh, small adenoma to an adenomatous polyp to a cancer, adenocarcinoma, within the colon. This usually takes years, and so um, <clears throat> we've got time to screen for it. Unfortunately, most of us aren't taking the time. 50,000 people die with this disease every year in the U.S. alone, and over 30,000 of them died unnecessarily. If they had been screened, they could have uh, removed the polyp or the cancer and lived. So, <clears throat> you look it up under um, uh, WebMD. Uh, so you think, well, you know what, they're good. They understand the science and may maybe they can help me tell, decide which um, colorectal cancer screening test to use. Well, maybe not. Here's their version of it. At-home screening test for colon cancer. Uh, testing yourself for colon cancer is now easier and more uh, accurate. Cologuard's do-it-yourself do kit, FDA approved in 2014. And it goes on to explain how it works. It determines if there's blood in your stool, a common sign of colon cancer, and it will, oh, by the way, also look for DNA cells. So again, not a great description. And again, but what if there's not blood in the stool? And what if there's not DNA in the stool? Um, <clears throat> So let's go look at another version of this. Let's look, go to, straight to the horse's mouth. Look at um, Exact Science and their website. They're clearly appealing to um, the 50s that want to be younger. Um, the folks that are looking at the new 50. 50 is the new 30. Um, <clears throat> or something like that. Wealthy, uh, well-known clients. This is Harry Connick Jr. And I'm assuming that's his wife, Jill Connick. Uh, they both look very young. They don't look 50 to me. Um, and here they've got the new generation, is uh, 50 generations about having options. And share your Cologuard experience. I'm not likely to do that last one. Um, <clears throat> As you know, or maybe you don't know, one of the differences between um, Cologuard and the other stool uh, sampling mechanisms is you send in an entire stool sample, not just a, um, a brushing of the sample like you do with the FIT test, uh, fecal immunochemical test, or the, uh, well, that's really the only other one you should consider. Another major difference, 649 bucks for um, the fecal DNA test. But still, it's worth it because it's a lot better, right? No, no, it's not. Again, um, <clears throat> well, this, the numbers would indicate it. Here are the numbers um, as interpreted by a uh, health plan. They come out, uh, it's the uh, Capital District Physicians Health, health Plan. Um, and they come out of the block saying, look, it's really clear and it's acknowledged that Cologuard increases the sensitivity to 92% uh, compared to FIT sensitivity of 74%. So we know that you've got a perception that it's better. But remember, 
Uh, Color Guard is done only every three years. And with that price, 650 bucks compared to 22, you're not likely to repeat Color Guard every year. Um, <clears throat> with FIT, you can repeat it a few times at 22 bucks a piece. Uh, they go on and quote the, uh, the JAMA, JAMA article that I've covered in uh, other uh, videos in this series. And then they go on to talk about <clears throat> fit testing, fecal immunochemical testing versus Cologuard. They first start off with the patient impact. That's what these numbers are, and that's what this analysis is. They took this out of the, again, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommendations uh, as uh, printed in JAMA of 2016. For every thousand individuals screened, 22 are helped with the FIT test. They avoid a cancer uh, experience. For Cologuard, or an adenomatous experience, for Cologuard, it's 20. Um, <clears throat> for a uh, life years gained, it's 244 for um, FIT and 228. So again, Maybe close enough for uh, hand grenades and horseshoes, but um, it maybe uh, maybe makes a difference if you're one of those 18 people that got a a better outcome, avoided a a problem. On the other hand, what's uh, what's the story with um, uh, with harms? Ten people harmed with fit as opposed to nine. Again. You may say that's close enough for uh, government work, but that one person in the difference may not agree with you. <clears throat> Here's the big deal. Uh, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force and many others are will mention the fecal DNA testing, but they go on to say the problem is it's inefficient. Read inefficient as it costs too much. Here's the cost for one fit test at 22 bucks, one um, uh, fecal DNA test at 600, and uh, well, uh, for them it's $502. For a full 10 years, 10 of the FIT tests at 219, three of the fecal tests, uh, DNA tests at 1506. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting, there was a, I, I went back and found an article by a um, the biz, a business writer for the LA Times in 2014 when this came out, the fecal DNA test came out, and even though it's a business article and it's LA Times, I think he hit the nail on the head. A good alternative to having a colonoscopy? Well, maybe not. And that's by uh, David Lazarus, August 20, 2014, LA Times. Um, <clears throat> so why did he say maybe not? Well, he starts off with, with a good point. There's a major squirm factor for getting colonoscopy. And it may not be the endoscopy itself because you're out, but still you have to do those day, take a day off from work and do those days worth of uh, uh, bowel cleansing. And again, for those that are not worried about the squirm factor, there's still the take time off of work and go into an OR factor. It's a major hassle. So a Wisconsin company called Exact Sciences has developed a new product called Cologuard, and it calls it the breakthrough test for colon cancer screening. Uh, that's as easy as going to the bathroom. Well, <clears throat> Cologuard is the first to use a uh, person's DNA rather than blood to spot, spot uh, tumors. It was approved in uh, uh, 2014 by the FDA. But here's the thing, though. Exact sciences, even the, the mother company says, Cologuard isn't as an exact science. Um, the tests can detect 92% of colon cancers, but both false positives and negatives do occur. It's said that up to 13% of people were incorrectly diagnosed by Cologuard as having potentially cancerous polyps. The rate of false positives for stool was much, much lower than that. Now, we went through that uh, earlier on, an, on another video, and it, again, it gets into some epidemiology. 
If you consider the people under the red line as people having true positive disease or colon cancer or a polyp, and the people under the blue line as not having colon cancer or polyp, and this is the test. So you may want to come right here in the middle. These would be considered false positives. Uh, excuse me, false negatives because they got a negative test. This side of the test is negative. This side is positive. These are going to be false negatives. That's a huge problem. So you want to decrease false negatives. Well, what do you do then? You add, if you're exact sciences, you do the fecal uh, DNA, but you also add uh, immunochemical testing, maybe blood uh, testing. And what that does effectively is move this testing line up this way. So you are successful at decreasing false negative tests, but what are you buying or, or what are you getting when you do, do that as the trade-off? A huge increase in these people. These are no longer true negatives because these are now, the test is a positive on this side, these are now false positives. So you get a significant increase in false positives. It's just an epidemiological concept that's involved with um, screening, testing. Um, <clears throat> here's some comments from some experts when the, uh, when the uh, test came out. It's a breakthrough test. 600 per patient compared with 25 for the others. Hmm, big cost concern. Joel Levine, uh, Chief of Gastroenterology at New York's Columbia University said, well, for patients who either can't or won't undergo colonoscopy or, or sedation, again, you're getting back to that key issue of why there's so much confusion about which test to use. The problem is the best test is the one that you actually do. Uh, again, some more information regarding uh, the problem. Over 50,000 deaths, 30, of over 30,000 of which could have been prevented. So <clears throat> is the uh, DNA Cologuard test uh, breakthrough? Uh, it could be uh, in terms of science at least and maybe effectiveness, but the problem is they've uh, costed themselves right out of the market.